Hi everyone, welcome to this GCSE Foundation Revision video. So we're doing the 100 days of the GCSE Maths exam countdown and we're day number 89 or 89 days to go, not day number 89, um, we're in 89 days to go. And in today's video we're going to focus on bar charts, pictograms and tally charts. So we're going to look at how to draw those and how to answer questions for from them whenever they've been drawn for you. So for instance, if you've got a pictogram that's been drawn for you, how to answer a question based on that. So in today's session we're going to focus on those bar charts, tally charts and pictograms. So let's get started. Okay, so today we're going to look at tally charts, bar charts, and pictograms. So let's start off with tally charts. So tally charts are particularly useful whenever we're counting things. And here we've got a tally chart. And one thing I want to point out is whenever we've got one, two, three, four of something, when we get to five, we can either put a line across like so, so five. Some people do it diagonally, so one, two, three, four, and then they do a diagonal line. It's really up to you how you want to do that, but it's one, two, three, four, and then a line going across, and then you carry on. So that's how you count using tally charts. And here's a tally chart, and we've been asked to complete it. And feel free now to pause the video and to try this question yourself. So to complete this tally chart, and then I'll go through it in a second. So here we've got Monday, and as you can see, we've got a bunch of five there. So five, and then number five, so it's five, 10, 11, 12. So 12 is the frequency. So for Tuesday, we've got one, two, three. So let's put three in there. Wednesday, so that's seven. So we're going to do one, two, three, four, and then one going across. So that's five, six, seven. So that's seven for Wednesday. In terms of Thursday, that's 5, 10, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. So there's 19 on Thursday. And then Friday's 10, so it's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And that's it. And that's it. We've completed the tally chart. Okay, so now let's have a look at bar charts. So bar charts are a useful way to represent data. So here we've got a bar chart, and we've got the number of ice creams sold as the title. We've got the number of ice creams sold going up vertically, and it's important whenever you're drawing a bar chart to make sure you label that vertical axis. So here we have got the number of ice creams sold, or sometimes we would write the word frequency. And then horizontally here we've got days of the week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and day there. So we've got the number of ice creams sold, and here, as you can see here we've got the bar for Monday, the bar for Tuesday, the bar for Wednesday, Thursday and Friday. Okay, and in terms of each of these bars, if we have a look at them in terms of Monday, let's have a look at the little boxes. We've got one, two, three, four, five little boxes to get to 100. So 100 divided by five is 20. So this is going up in 20. So 20, 40, 60, 80. So 80 ice creams were sold on Monday, 100 on Tuesday, and so on. Okay, let's have a look at our first question. So our first question says, on which two days were the same number of ice creams sold? So again, feel free to pause this video and to try these two questions if you want to. Um, in a second, I'm going to go through them. Okay, so the question said on which two days were the same number of ice cream sold. So we're looking for two bars that have got the same height. And as you can see here, Wednesday and Friday, have, the bars have got the same height as each other. They've both got a height of, well, 100, 120, 140, 160, 180. So 180 ice creams were sold on Wednesday and 180 ice creams were sold on Friday. So the question said on which two days were the same number of ice cream sold, they, that would be Wednesday and Friday. And that's it. Okay, the next question. The next question says, how many more ice creams were sold on Thursday than Friday? So again, feel free to give this question a shot now if you want to. Okay, so we want to find out how many more ice creams were sold on Thursday than on Friday. So we've already worked out that Friday, 180 ice creams were sold. Remember, it was 100. We're going up in 20, so 120, 140, 160, 180. So 180 ice creams were sold on Friday. In terms of Thursday, well, if we go up to Thursday, we've got 300, and then 320, 340. So 340 ice creams were sold on Thursday. And we want to work out how many more were sold on Thursday than Friday. So we're just going to take this away. We're going to work out the difference between them. So we're going to do 300. 40 subtract 180 and see what we get so 0 take away 0 is 0 4 take away 8 let's borrow so it's now a 2 and a 14 14 take away 8 is 6 and 2 take away 1 is 1 so 160 more ice creams were sold on Thursday than on Friday and that's it Okay, so we've had a look at bar charts. Now let's have a look at dual bar charts. So dual bar charts are quite useful whenever perhaps we've got two different years. So here's a dual bar chart for the number of goals scored in the cup by three ice hockey teams last year and this year. So we've got the Flames last year in the cup scored six goals. And this year in the cup in yellow, they scored 14 goals and so on. So dual bar charts are quite useful whenever you've got, uh, you're comparing different perhaps categories, but then you've got maybe last year and this year, or you've got things like that. So let's have a look at this question. And again, feel free to pause the video now to try this question yourself if you want to. So the question says, uh, we've got a dual bar chart that shows the number of goals scored in the cup by three ice hockey teams. So we've got three ice hockey teams, the Flames, the Steelers and the Blaze. And we've got last year in blue and we've got in this year in yellow. And so for instance, the Flames scored six last year and this year they've scored 14. The Steelers scored seven last year and seven this year and so on. 
So the question then says, Catherine says that the three teams scored more goals in the cup last year than this year. Is she correct? So she's saying that last year they scored more goals than this year. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work out the number of goals scored for last year and this year for each of the teams. So the Flames, that's six last year and this year 14. Last year for the Steelers is seven and this year for the Steelers is seven. And the Blaze last year, well, that's 11. And then the Blaze this year, well, we've got here, that's going to be equal to four. So they scored four this year. So now let's work out and see how many goals were scored last year and how many goals were scored this year. So in terms of last year, so last year. So last year, the Flames scored six plus the Steelers scored seven and the Blaze scored 11. So let's add those together and see what we get. So six plus seven is equal to 13, plus 11 is equal to 24. So last year, 24 goals were scored. Now let's have a look at this year. So this year, the Flames scored 14, the Steelers scored seven, and the Blaze scored four. So let's add those together and see what we get. So 14 plus seven is 21, plus four is 25. So as you can see this year, 25 goals were scored, and last year, 24 goals were scored. So is she correct that more goals were scored last year than this year? No, she's not, no. She is not. And that's it. Okay, so we've looked at bar charts, we've looked at dual bar charts. Now let's look at composite bar charts. So sometimes you might get a bar chart that looks something like this, where we've got two bits of information together. So here we've got the composite bar chart shows information about the drinks sold over three months. So in January, we've got drinks that are sold. And as you can see, there's hot drinks and cold drinks. In February, hot drinks and cold drinks were sold. And in March, hot drinks and cold drinks were sold. And in pink, we've got the hot drinks. And in gray, we've got the cold drinks. So for instance, if we look here at January, in terms of the hot drinks, they're quite easy because they start at zero. So we can go up and we can just see how many hot drinks were sold. So the hot drinks, we've got 450 because in between 400 and 500. So there's 450 hot drinks sold in January. In terms of the cold drinks, we've got to be careful here because we're up to 450 and we're going up from 450 to 600. So if we do 600 take away 450, that's equal to 150, 150. Or another way to do that is to look at the little boxes and we've gone from zero to 100. So we've gone 50, 100. So each of the little boxes is 50. So we've then got, if we start here, 50, 100, 150. So that's another way to do it. Okay, let's have a look at the questions now. So we've got two questions and feel free to press pause and try these questions yourself. So the question says, in which two months were the same number of hot drinks sold? So let's have a look at the bars and see, let's have a look at the hot drinks, which is the pink bars. So in January and February, you can see they've got the same number of hot drinks sold in January and February. There's 450 hot drinks sold in January and 450 hot drinks sold in February. So the question said, on which two months were the same number of hot drinks sold? That's going to be January and February. So January, January and February, and hopefully you got that correct. And then the next question says, how many cold drinks were sold in March? So let's have a look at March. We've got hot drinks down here. So we want to look at the cold drinks. Now we've got two different ways we can do this. One way was to remember that each of the little boxes was were 50. So if we start here, we've got 50, 100, 150, 200, 250, 300, 350, 400, 450. So there's 450 cold drinks sold in March. So let's write that down, 450. Another way to do it instead, instead of counting the lit boxes, was to look at the total, which was equal to 750. 750 is the total. If we then look at the hot drinks, which was, if we go to here, the hot drinks, which is 300. And if we take 300 away from 750, that leaves you with 450 cold drinks. Or you could have counted the lit boxes, and that's it. Okay, so we've looked at tally charts and we've looked at bar charts. Now let's have a look at pictograms. So again, pictograms are another way to represent information. And here we've got a pictogram that represents information about the number of hours of sunshine in four cities in a day in June. So on one particular day in June, in Paris, there's this amount of sunshine in Cork and so on. So the four cities are Paris, Cork, London and Swansea. And we've got this key. And this key says that each circle represents four hours. So if we look at Cork here, Cork would have four, eight, 12 hours of sunshine and so on. And the question says, how many more hours of sunshine did Swansea have than London? So feel free to pause the video now and to give this question a try. Now, if I was in this in a normal exam question, I would actually just focus on London and Swansea and to work that out. But I'm just going to show you a bit more about how pictograms work here. So we've got the each circle represents four hours. So if we have a look at Cork, we've got four, eight, 12 hours of sunshine. So that's 12 hours. I'm just going to write 12 hours there. So in terms of Paris, we've got four, eight and then we've got half a circle so it's going to be half of four hours which is two hours so this is two hours so we've got four eight and then another two is ten hours so that means that paris would be ten hours of sunshine 
And then in terms of Swansea and London, uh, we've got a quarter circle and a free quarter circle. The quarter circle is going to be worth one hour because that's a quarter of the four and a quarter of four is one, so it's going to be one hour. And this three quarter circles, that's going to be three hours because obviously it's going to be three quarters of four, which is three. So in terms of London, we've got four plus another three would be seven hours of sunshine. And in terms of Swansea, that's four, eight, and then another hour would be nine hours. So the question says, how many more hours of sunshine did Swansea have than London? That would be nine subtract seven, and that's equal to two. So it'd have two more hours of sunshine. Now, just to say that in an exam question, I wouldn't have worked out the core comparison in this part because I didn't need to, but I just want to show you how the pictograms work, and that's it. So hopefully you got that correct, that Swansea has two more hours of sunshine than London. And that's it. So we've gone through bar charts, tally charts, and pictograms. And they're very important topics because they're ones that, you know, hopefully you're going to get full marks on, particularly if you want to do well in your GCSE foundation. Your bar charts, tally charts, and pictogram questions should be hopefully topics where you can, you know, get some safe marks for those. Remembering stuff like the key in terms of the pictogram, making sure you know what each one of the symbols is worth and so on. So I hope you find this video useful. In the description below, I've put a link to the practice questions. Again, these types of questions, it might be quite useful to print those because then you can then do them on the sheet if you can print them, uh, because then you can do them on the sheet and just save you a bit of time doing those. So we really hope you found this video useful. If you have found it useful, please like and please subscribe to the YouTube channel. Also, if you've been finding these videos useful, perhaps tell your teacher about them and let them know just about the videos, because perhaps then they can share with other people in the class and um, you know you can help them out and also get the video more views as well. So thanks so much and I'll see you tomorrow at three o'clock. Okay, cheers. Bye.